So we are wearing red this week for the power of life. And this is the last in the series based on the practical Christianity of Charles and Myrtle Fillmore that they taught 150 years ago. They wanted to teach us how to live a good life, to be healed and whole and prosperous and have harmonious relationships. Our faith is not about suffering. The only thing we want you to give up is suffering. We don't do guilt, for instance. As I told some friends that came by for the uh, singing bowl, not this week, but the week before, and they, a couple of them were new to Unity, and I said to her, we are all carrot and no stick. Charles and Myrtle Fillmore also taught metaphysical Bible interpretation, understanding the symbolism in the Bible and not taking it literally. So he wrote the 12 powers in line with metaphysical Bible interpretation. And we are studying a new book, relatively recent, by Paul Hasselbeck called Power Up, based on the 12 powers that Charles Fillmore introduced. With the understanding that our powers represent our disciples. Jesus had 12 disciples, and the 12 powers are our abilities that help us to be the best Christ or the best person that we can be. Charles Fillmore wanted us to know that we, our highest self, our true self, is a divine self. And but what does that look like? What do I do with that? So you walk in for the first time and somebody says, I behold a Christ in you. Well, so then what? You have your 12 powers to make that uh, real in your life, to make it practical and to make it for your benefit on every level. So the goal is to be the best Christ that you can be eventually until you achieve transformation. For every one of these 12 powers, we've been going over that there are four levels. At the bottom is the subconscious level, then up to the conscious, then to the personality level, and finally the spiritual level. So every one of these powers has a subconscious, uh, an unconscious or subconscious manifestation. And your subconscious power of life is devoted to survival tactics. It's either your instinct or the, the tactics that you developed as a little child in order to have your needs met. What needs are those? Well, we all have basic needs. You know, you could have named them yourself. We all need food and water. We all need community. We all need safety. And uh, one of the needs of the human race is procreation. So there's a very popular TV show called Naked and Afraid. Okay, I, I kept this clean for you, <laughs> but they really do take, as I, the, I saw a couple of episodes a long time ago, and I know that in subsequent se uh, seasons they have altered a little bit, but the basic, as I understand it, and correct me if they, they've changed it, they take a person and they do put them naked into a natural setting somewhere with the understanding that they have to survive without any help from civilization. And they will let them have one item, like, for instance, a lighter or a knife 
or a fish hook. Now let them have one thing. Is it still that way? Nobody's watching it anymore? Okay, it's still that way? Okay. Well, uh, I, am, I have the opinion that while people who are fit, like this contestant is obviously very, very fit, and usually they are trained in survival skills. They, they don't take uh, people like me, pe pe people in their 70s, uh, who was raised all of her life in apartments and never went camping even once. They don't take people like me. They take people with survival skills who are fit. Nevertheless, they aren't really alone because they have a camera crew with them, right? And I have the, the very few episodes I've seen. In one episode, uh, the contestant was using her fish hook, and she got it hooked into the palm of her hand. And because of the danger of infection, and she couldn't get it out herself, uh, she, she was eliminated. So, and I'm sure that there are contestants who have difficulties that they never show. You know, you never see them. Because the truth is that a human being cannot survive in the wilderness alone for any length of time. The food and water you may be able to get but you've got to have community. Where did these people learn their survival skills? They learned it from a community. Community for human beings is essential. It's not essential for all animals, but it is essential for us because of our lengthy uh, maturity period. You know, it takes like, 12 to 14 years to get a child up to this state where they're halfway able to take care of themselves. So community is absolutely necessary. So the next level is the conscious level. It's at the conscious level that we decide how to meet our needs. And if there is a threat, it is at the conscious level that you decide whether to fight, whether to take flight, or whether to freeze. The fight, flight, or freeze is a conscious way of dealing with uh, whatever comes up, whatever problems we have. But then how you do that is up to your personality. Our personalities are the next level of the use of our powers at the sense level, you know, below the spiritual. So the personality for all of the powers, you can have either overdeveloped or underdeveloped. In the case of life, you can have overdeveloped life and be an exercise nut or you can have underdeveloped life and be a couch potato. You can put absolutely no effort into your security, walking around with uh, no, no concern for what, what a prudent person should be doing either for today or for tomorrow. Or you can have overdeveloped, uh, underdeveloped life where you think nothing but uh, your money. You can't take it with it with you. And uh, <laughs> I heard a, a little squib of uh, Jack, you, you ever remember Jack Benny? Years ago he was at the, it was a radio show and he was being robbed and the robber said, your money or your life? And Jack Benny said, <laughs> absolutely nothing. He said, okay. <laughs> okay. So, 
Uh, then for safety, you can have overdeveloped sense, uh, sense of safety. There are people who uh, have agoraphobia and they can't even leave the house. One of my neighbors has that condition. And in the 20 years that we have lived in this house, although I have interacted and seen her husband many times, and all of my neighbors, I know my neighbors, I've only seen her once in 20 years. She does not leave the house. Or you can have underdeveloped safety and be a daredevil and get your thrills by uh, just forgetting about safety and uh, evil Knievel and all of these people that do, you know, like this guy is walking on a tightrope between tall buildings. Oh, well. And you can have overdeveloped sense of community or an underdeveloped sense of community. You can be so intent on keeping everybody happy that you have no life to your, of your own. Or you can be a, someone who totally rejects any community whatsoever and just be a hermit. You can have overdeveloped or underdeveloped life sense of procreation. The upper left-hand corner photo is the wives of Warren Jeffs. Remember Warren Jeffs from the uh, LDS cult? And in that cult, a man's status was dependent on how many wives he had. The more wives you had, the higher you were in the church hierarchy. And then the uh, underdeveloped procreation, uh, I think the bottom of the barrel of that uh, perversion of life is human trafficking, which is a thing. But on the spiritual level, this is the level that the 12 powers address. The 12 powers, uh, the power of life, and it's, it's almost always joined with love. Life and love go together. And both of those powers, by the way, it's interesting. Those two powers are the only powers that are also attributes of God. God is life, God is love. The power of life is very mysterious. It is, it is more of, of a matter of experience than intellectual knowing. So with the power of life at the spiritual level, you can throw yourself into whatever is yours to do, whether it's cooking a meal for your family or working in a restaurant or farming and producing food for people or some kind of service like a plumber, seeing that we have clean water and that it, dirty water is properly disposed of. Very important for life. You can devote your life to the community, you can keep the community in mind in everything you do by being a safe driver. Uh, people who are clergy serve, serve the community with uh, whatever religious organizations we have or serving in the military or the law enforcement or just by recycling. All of those things serve life and you can do them all with love using the using the power of life to, uh, to manifest life and to give life. The human race needs procreation. There are little one-cell animals, you know, just one, I couldn't, you know, microscopic animals that uh, procreate by dividing. So no partner is required, but most life on this planet requires procreation. And if we don't procreate, then our species will die. So it's important that the 
power of life at the spiritual level be infused into every aspect of procreation from ro the romance of finding the right partner from uh, establishing a family raising children or some people go another path and they devote their life to cheat to teaching children and teaching young adults you you can't procreation is not a one night stand <laughs> procreation is like a 20 year commitment it's 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 raising the children and uh that requires uh a tremendous amount of your time and energy and it's the power of life that will sustain you through that process uh, and for safety every home that is built by those workers have contributed to your safety the people who work in the transportation industry who work in any service or retail industry it's all in service of life and you can have that frame of mind i am serving life if whether i'm one of those or working in the, certainly the medical field or an administrative job can certainly be in service of life so life itself is the most mysterious of all of the powers you know when i read this chapter in hasselbeck's book i confess that uh, I just thought it was a dud. <laughs> I, you know, I really thought, wow, is that all? He, is that is that all he's got on life? But uh, what can we say about life? Life is very mysterious. Life is a miracle. So we have the twelve powers, but if there were no human beings on the planet, once upon a time there were no human beings on the planet we would still have life life was here before us and of the attributes of god only life and love are also powers so just think about it in the entire galaxy we, we with uh, billions of stars just in the galaxy there are billions of stars we have not found life anywhere except on our planet we are like the earth is like a grain of sand on all of the beaches put together and then on the planet our place is very interesting if you took all of the people on the planet and put them on one side of the scale and all of the bugs and insects of every type on the other side of the scale they would outweigh us and that's not just in florida that's worldwide <laughs> you have microbes in your body and on your body you know there's a specific type of microbe that only lives in your eyelashes. <laughs> there are more microbes in your body than cells in your body, in and on your body. Which to me makes us even more insignificant uh, as a species. So where did life come from? Scientists don't know. They have not they, they have various theories, but they have not been able to produce life from matter. They do know that it happened right after the Earth formed oceans. The, the Earth went, in its formation, it went through various stages. And it had to go through a specific stage to produce the oceans. And right after the oceans were formed, life came came to be and they think that it had something to do with amino acids forming in the primordial soup and joining in into chains to form proteins
but that is only one of several theories. So if you look up life, you get this, this really, uh, don't, don't try to absorb this, I'm going to read it very quickly. Life is a quality that distinguishes matter that has biological processes, such as signaling and self-sustaining processes, from matter that does not and is defined by the capacity for growth, reaction, stimuli, metabolism, energy transformation, and reproduction. So that's a mouthful, but it really boils down to this. Life is matter that has biological processes. It's like the difference between a lake and a river. The lake just sits there. The river is a process, so it flows. There's it. So in other words, life is an event. It's a process. And it's an ongoing event. It has been ongoing on this planet for uh, hundreds of millions of years, maybe billions, I forget, a very long time. And it's a miracle. Nobody can explain how it happened so far. And it's a miracle that has happened only on this planet. So you are a miracle. You are part of this life process that is so unique and mysterious. In uh, one of his, in a song that he wrote by Peter Mayer, he says, wine from water is not so small, but an even better magic trick is that anything is here at all. And not only are we here, but we are alive and we are spiritual beings. In Genesis, the, the writer tries to give um, a feeling for the uniqueness of human beings. The other animals in Genesis are just created like poof, one day suddenly they're all there. Suddenly there are fish in the ocean. Suddenly there are birds in the air. Suddenly the next day there are animals roaming around on the, on the earth. But human beings were made differently. The breath of life was breathed into them by God personally in, in Genesis, showing that we are, uh, we are spiritual beings we have bodies, but we are spirit. In unity, we talk about the body temple, that your temple, your body is the temple of the living God. And this is why when we, when we start every service, we say, I behold the Christ in you. I behold your true self. I behold your spirit. I behold your divinity. And... If you think about it, only the Christ can see the Christ. If you didn't have that aspect of your being that is divine, you could not see divinity around you. And this is an ongoing miracle of which we are all part. And all your fears are based on a doubt that you will not have what you need for life. But in spirit, we have no fear because God is spirit. Paraphrasing from uh, H. Emily Cady, spirit cannot be sick or afraid or die. I am a child of God. God is life. I am life expressing as me, God individualized. This is the nature of our lives, and it is awesome. Because I am life, and you are life. And, you know, we, we tend to be, live our lives now in boxes. Either 
our houses or our cars. But when you're not in, in a box, you're surrounded by so much life and you're part of that. Uh, there's only one life. The life that we have here on this planet, it's all one life. We're all one. You know, it, when, you're, when they talk about communing with nature, it's feeling that, it's knowing that, that the life of God is in nature and in us.